I don't know if I should apologize or not. Because as I've grown older, my tolerance for foolishness is real, real low. When I was 18 and 20 and 30 years old, I I could, I could and had no problem being around children. Children are children, immature, silly. They don't know any better. You have to have tolerance and patience with children. They don't, they don't know any better. They are depending upon adults to help guide them. That's understandable. So with children, you have to have patience and you have to be able to be uh, tolerate children. They are immature. They don't know. Silly. But now, I don't have to be around children. And being an older person as I am, I don't really like, I have to put myself in a certain mindset. To be around children. I, I can't. I can't tolerate that type of behavior. And now I'm dealing with. Adults. Who exhibit. Childish. Mindset. Their. Their. Feelings. Get hurt. Like like you do children. and Children pout. You hurt my feelings. They can't get what they want. And they stick out their tongue and they sit on the floor and they stump their little feet and clap their hands and they get upset because they can't get what they want. And you see the same type of behavior from these adults. It's so damn sickening to me. I'm too old for it. I can't do it. I'm a older, I'm older and I'm crabbier. It's certain things I can't tolerate. You're too old to act that way, but they do. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 year old people act like they two years old and five years old and six and whatever. I'm supposed to be patient. I'm supposed to tolerate. I'm dealing with adult people. It makes no sense. I got to worry about you can't say nothing. You can't do nothing. Their feelings get hurt. I'm sick of it. I can't do it. I've never heard or saw in history, because y'all history buffs, you, you, you love history. You love to read about history, but you don't know a damn thing about making history. There's a difference between reading history and making history. All of your YouTube videos put together ain't made no damn History, but that's all they do all day long. Other little silly nothings, crap that does not make history. And they read and plagiarize about the history they got from some damn where they don't talk about their own history because you ain't did a damn thing. Oh, <laughs> that's why you don't talk about your own history because you don't do nothing. You don't want to write your own autobiography. You want to get jealous about somebody writing their autobiography because you can't write one because many of you can hardly, uh, barely read and write anyway, but you don't have nothing of substance. You don't have nothing to talk about in your pitiful, miserable ass life. Wow, Angel, you going off. Yeah, I'm going off. Yeah, I, I have to because it's sickening to me. Somebody told me, do not ask a person, how you doing? We do that all the time, right? Don't ask a person, how you doing? 
if you're not willing, if they say, man, well, hey, uh, I'm doing pretty bad. Don't ask nobody how they're doing unless you're willing to help them change their condition, help them to do better. Otherwise, why are you asking? Because you don't give a damn about them. Hey, uh, how are you doing? Well, my wife left me. My car won't start. I, I lost my job yesterday. Okay. Then you go on about your business. And so I make it a habit of mine to try to not do that anymore. Even though I would, but I'm not, it's not always possible that I could, can't help somebody, but I don't, I don't like asking that question unless I'm ready to help that person heal themselves or do something to improve their condition. Should they say, Hey, it ain't going too well, bro. So I have people come here and ask us dumbass questions. How the Mississippi campaign, like you give a damn. You don't give a damn about what, what, what we doing with the Mississippi campaign. Because quite honestly, a lot of these persons, they hear how we talk. And there are thousands hundreds and thousands of those people and they can't accomplish nothing. It's thousands of Pan-Africans. It's thousands of pro-blacks. It's thousands of Christians. It's thousands of these people. You have a lot of education. You have a lot of money. You have a lot of assets and you can't accomplish nothing. We don't have any help. You ask us how we're doing, but you offer us no help, no labor, no money, no time. It's just a nosy ass question. So that you can, you want to hear us tell you, well, you know, ain't nothing happening. You want to hear that. Because you're a loser. They want us to be a loser like them. But like we say, even when we lose, we win. Because what we have here has never been tried before. So you don't know whether it will work or not work because you never tried it. But we have tried all these different things. And a lot of this tiddlywink stuff that they do, that's for vanity purposes. So they can pretend like I'm doing this for my people. No, you're doing it for your damn self and your family. All the profits that you're doing is going to your family to create your generational wealth. It's not doing a damn thing for the people. Just because somebody owned a black business, that business was not created for the people. The black owned business is created for that sucker and his family. This is fact. I have never heard of nobody creating a black business so the people themselves can benefit. The people themselves actually is the owner. Should they die, it goes to the people. I've never heard of that. All these Black owned businesses is for these Negroes and their family. You're not their family. You're not their people. They're not going to give you nothing. They want you to go there, spend your money so they can get rich. Your ass still at the bus stop and they're going to pass by you in their fancy Lexus or their Mercedes Benz or whatever that they bought from the white man's uh, dealer establishment. You're not going to benefit. They're not going to wait until we build a Lexus and a Mercedes or whatever luxury cars or whatever. They're not going to wait for that because that's not their purpose. Their purpose is to live 
like the pecker would. And we keep falling for the old okie doke. A lot of us do. Well, some of us, the majority of us really don't. We don't give a damn about black owned business. We don't give a damn about pro black Pan African. The majority of the people clearly don't give a damn about that type of stuff. Always coming to me with their advice. Well, you, and you're snubbing up seven. You need to wear uh, better clothes. Buy me some clothes. Send me some clothes. They don't send me nothing. You need to have a better camera, a better computer. Well, well send it to me. You need to do this, Angel. You need to come over. They have all this advice for you. Except help. They give us nothing. They do nothing for you. But they can sit around and find fault. I never said that Operation Exodus Mississippi is some perfect thing. I never said it has doesn't have flaws. What we say is that it is a good foundation to work from and by us working together on this strong foundation we can accomplish a goal. That's what we said. Everything is trial and error. Everything is like a chess game. Everything is like a strategy. And some things you don't know until you get into it. And then you deal with it. But I'm very sure and I'm very confident that it can work. But the problem is Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign. It takes unity. It takes Love, all those things that these people claim they represent, that's what it takes in order to make it successful, in, over, in order to accomplish and succeed in the goal. But see, these persons are really not about unity. They're not about love. They're not, they have a questionable agenda. They're nothing but, as we say here all the time, nothing but. Slave master wannabes. They want to be like the white man. They want to be like the oppressor. They don't want you to really experience freedom, justice, and equality. They want you to go from one slave master to another. It was brought to my attention that Mississippi is not 80% black population. It's more like 40%. That's true does not negate what must what must be done if it's if it's 40% then we need to bring it up also texas is highly populated black also washington dc is populated black that's not the problem mississippi is the least path of resistance you want to make a move, the resistance factor is low, which means that your probability of success would be higher if your population or whatever is too low, then you got to do whatever it can in order to increase it. Whatever the problem is, solve it. It was brought to my attention that I call myself a leader, but then I don't, it's confusing. Am I a leader or not? Somebody must lead the charge. Somebody, somebody must put themselves out front. But I'm not a leader in the essence of I'm some big shot. I'm the leader. And y'all no, we take every we take everything in consideration as we come part of the team because I don't know. There's many things I do not know. It would be unwise. It would not, it would be silly for me to put myself out there and I don't know. That's why 
Mississippi campaign, Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign, it's a national effort as a team where we need the brain power from the north, south, east, and, east and west so we can say when we, when we take control of this state, this is what we done. And using this as a blueprint, using this as an example, when you make it successful and you have the brain power, you have the skills, you have everything that you need in order to make this successful, then you, then your soldiers turn your eyes to the next territory that you want to conquer, that you want to take control of. Now you know exactly how to do it. Now you know it can be done because you've done it once. And every black man, every soul sister, every soul brother, whether you live north, south, east, or west, all of us who participated, we benefit in the, in what's the, what, what's the word from it? This trophy that we won. And we create our own sanctuary state, our safe haven. Since nobody, since we cannot depend on nobody else, you can't get any help from nobody else, you have to depend on ourselves. But you always have these clowns, they want to see you fail because that's what they have done for the last 50 years. Now, there was no Operation Exodus Mississippi in 2010. What was they doing? 11, 12, 13, 14. There was no Operation Exodus Mississippi. What was they doing? What are they doing now? The same loser stuff over the same titlywink crap. Here you are, a free man and a free woman, and you think small. You don't think free. You've done nothing that a slave fresh from the plantation could not do. Show us. What have these done? That our ancestors, straight, illiterate, from a slave plantation, show us what you're doing that they was not doing and didn't accomplish. This is 2021. We should have skyscrapers, nuclear power plants, roads, bridges, cities. You have nothing except DVDs. And debates. And then you want to get angry at Angel Snup Nup 7. Because I'm reminding you. That you're a damn loser. And you get angry at Angel Snup Nup 7. And you want to find fault. In Angel Snup Nup 7. And the only thing Angel Snup Nup 7 wants. Is for us to be winners. You should be sick. Of being a loser. Don't call me a winner. And I'm in second place. Don't call me a winner. I'm in seventh place. You win when you get the first place trophy. You win when you get the championship. Nobody praised the basketball team that came in second. Even though you lost by one point. Don't make any difference. You came in second. I speak the way I speak because I want to win. I'm sick of losing. Malcolm X, the Black Panthers, SNCC, Dr. King, whoever. I do not want them to die in vain. Harriet Tubman, Fannie Lou Hamer, Sojourner Truth, Coretta Scott King, Betty Shabbat. I don't want our people to have sacrificed and died in vain. Get yourself together, put it under one umbrella, and go for it. We can win. Grow up and stop crying because somebody hurt your damn feelings. <laughs>